Welcome! In this video, we will discuss how to do blood glucose screenings to test for diabetes as part of the Mercer University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences Diabetes Screening Program. This video is part of the training module that you will need to complete in order to be verified to do blood glucose testing along with faculty members from the college at various health fairs that you may be participating in while you're a student here at Mercer University. The first thing we're going to kind of go over are the materials that you will need in order to uh, check blood glucose as part of your blood glucose training, as part of your blood glucose uh, screening session. Alcohol swabs, gloves, they can either be latex or vinyl. Make sure that they're correct size for you. If you have large hands, make sure that they have large gloves. Cotton balls. You'll need some type of either paper towels or other paper to have down, and this is the area that you want to work on top of, and in case you get blood, um, spill blood, that you'll spill it on one of these paper towels that you can throw away. You'll want to have some disposable lancets, and not these types of lancet devices. These lancet devices are meant to only use on one patient. Okay, so you never want to use the type of Lancet devices that you sell to your patients to do blood glucose screenings because blood can get down into the bottom or to the tips of these devices and then you would infect, potentially could infect another patient and expose another patient to bodily fluids. So you never ever use these type of Lancet devices to do diabetes screenings. So I'm going to go ahead and take these and move these out of the picture. Just wanted to make sure you knew what type of Lancet devices. You want to use the type of Lancet devices that look similar to this where the whole Lancet device is completely disposable or if you want to just use these Lancets you can and dispose of these right after you use them. And, we'll, and I'll show you how to use these in a minute. You also want, very importantly, you want a sharps container. This is where you should throw your used Lancet devices. You also want a trash can nearby because this is where you want to throw everything else besides your Lancet devices. You don't want to throw gloves and cotton balls and test strips in the sharps container. This trash is very expensive to dispose of and it costs a lot of money. So we don't put things in here that aren't truly sharps and that don't truly belong in here. Also notice how I have the table set up. I'm right-handed, so I have my sharps container right next to my right hand as well as my trash can. I like to keep my area, my work area, very clean because this is how accidents happen and how needle sticks can happen. After you use your Lancet, before you start to worry about applying or running the test, you want to throw the Lancet immediately into the sharps container, okay? Um, this is the glucose meter. We have several types of glucose meter. The one here that we have here today is AccuCheck Aviva. Uh, one Touch is also another very common brand as well as Contour. Um, and you may be using any of those three brands, but for this purposes of this video, we're going to show you on an AccuCheck monitor. Meters come with uh, a very specific test strips. So if you have to buy test strips, you have to buy the test strips that go specifically with, with that meter in order to use this meter. You cannot use one touch strips on an AccuCheck Aviva meter. Okay, so you gotta make sure you have the right test strips. The other thing that you have to do prior to beginning any glucose screening is run two levels of control. This is a requirement by the Department of Human Resources for us, to, in order to do blood glucose screenings, we have to make sure that the meter is functioning properly and we have to run two levels of control. So you need to have these control solutions. Typically, you will not be able to find these control solutions at a uh, pharmacy or drugstore. Typically, we order them off of the internet, okay? And they cost about $10 for the two of them. So make sure you have those when you're doing your blood glucose screenings. Okay, so what you're gonna do is what I usually do is have the patient, the patient comes up, I have them sit down, and I'll have them fill out the paperwork that's necessary. Um, a, a consent form, I'll have them fill it out and sign it, and I will ask them if they know that they have diabetes. If they have diabetes, they cannot be screened. And repeat, if they have diabetes, you are not to test their blood sugar. That disqualifies them to participate in our screening program. Then the next thing you want to do 
is um, have them sit down, and then typically I will take the al an alcohol swab. Terry, you want to come over and be my patient? Okay, I will take an alcohol swab and I will swab their finger. Okay, go ahead and swab the finger good. And then I let it air dry. You never want to prick a finger that's wet with alcohol because it will sting. Then you place on your gloves. Okay, you probably want to use two gloves. If you have a ring on, you probably want to turn your ring, the, the, the diamond or the stone inside so that it's a little bit easier to get the gloves on and off. Or if you know you're doing a really big screening, I would leave your wedding rings at home because you don't want to accidentally pull off your glove and lose your ring inside of it and then throw the glove away. Okay, okay. So um, we've allowed the finger to dry. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to turn on the meter. Okay, and we see that a test strip has popped up. Actually, it should show us a number. We want to turn on the meter and we want to make sure that the code is matching the strips. And for some reason, a code number should appear on the screen of the meter and you want to make sure that it matches the code on the test strips. If it doesn't, for the AccuCheck Aviva, there is a little chip right here that should come with each bottle of test strips and so you need to replace that, trip, that, that chip. For one touch machine, there's a push button that you would push to change that number. Now this meter is blinking and it's showing a test strip. Okay, so you take the test strip out and you close the cap. You always want to keep the cap closed because there's a desiccant on the top of that cap that keeps those strips from being exposed to moisture. These strips, you want to place them so that the metal side is going in first with the name side up and the metal side first. You press it in, you push it in, okay? And then it's got, it's showing you a blood drop, a drop of blood. So at this point, I would take his finger and just rub it. One of the things that I've looked at is this patient's fingers are soft. I can tell he doesn't do a lot of hard labor and he's got nice soft fingers and so it's gonna be pretty easy to get blood out of there. Where you want to prick on the finger is on the side, on the tip, on the end of the finger, but on the side. Never in the very pad of the finger right here, in the very center, that's where all your nerves are, all, where all the patients, all, all the nerves are, and it would really hurt to prick him right here. So you prick him on the side because that's where it's going to hurt less. Typically, I will rub the finger. I'll sort of melt the finger by rubbing it from the bottom, going to the tip of the finger. And you can see here it's getting pretty red. You press against the side, and then you press the lancet, throw it directly into the sharps container. I see a lot of students that are like, oh, I got a stick. And the next thing you want to do is throw that lancet device on the table. Never put a lancet, a used sharp, anywhere other than in a sharps container. You pick the meter up. You see he's got a drop of blood, and you just take the tip of the strip and you place it onto the drop of blood. And it's, going, it's got a capillary action that's going to suck that blood right into that well. That well needs to be completely red. It takes very few seconds, and he's got a reading of 95. And according to the American Diabetes Association, that is association that is within normal. You take the, I usually take my glove off, I usually take the strip out with my gloves on and then throw all of that away in the trash can. He can throw away that, uh, dr that alcohol into the trash can and um, directly into the trash can. And then you are ready to write his blood glucose value results on his blood glucose fo results form and give it to him and explain it to him.